Welcome to Humber Library's video on reading a cross table in Vividata. For a more general introduction to the tool, see our Introduction to Vividata video. This video will show you how to read a cross table to answer the question, what is the most popular phone brand for Toronto residents in Generation Y? To see how this table was generated, watch our video on creating cross tables in Vividata. This table shows that 47.3% of Toronto residents in Generation Y have an Apple iPhone, making it the most popular phone in the city. To accurately read a table in Vividata, the percentage and count must always be read as a fraction of the column headings. This is called a vertical percentage because it is first read vertically. Start with the 47.3%, then continue moving up to read the column headings to create 47.3% of Toronto residents in Generation Y. Only then do you finish by reading the row that the 47.3 is in. This creates the phrase, 47.3% of Toronto residents in Generation Y own an iPhone. Be careful not to read the table horizontally, such as, 47.3% of iPhone owners are Toronto residents in Generation Y. These phrases seem interchangeable, but they're not. To find the correct answer to the horizontally read phrase would require building a whole new table. To read the entire table, start at the top of the table. This example table includes the 14 plus variable as a row or question and as a column or split. This variable represents all the participants in the survey. It's okay to leave these variables in the table because they add context when reading the results. Next, read the column headings of the table. In this example, the headings or splits are nested. You can tell this because they're positioned on top of each other. The first heading, 14 plus, tells us the variable which contains all the respondents to the survey. The next heading, also labeled 14 plus, indicates that for this variable, the only possible answer is included, everyone over 14 years of age. The next variable heading, demographics, age, generation, generation, tells us that this variable contains answers that split the survey respondents into generations of people. The next heading, Gen Y, born 1980 to 1995, is the selected answer for the demographics, age, generation, generation variable. The next heading, demographics, geography, submarkets, is a variable name that indicates that its answers will be geographic submarkets of Canada. And then the next heading, city of Toronto, is the answer that has been selected from that variable. When reading the nested headings, it's important to note that the population represented in the table becomes smaller as more variables are nested underneath each other. It's also important to note that 14 plus, demographics, age, generation, generation, and demographics, geography, submarkets are the variables, and that for each of them, we have decided to display only one answer. Sometimes when building a table, you may choose to display many answers for a single variable, as is the case with our mobile phone variable. There are two more headings at the top of the table. They are count and percent. The numbers under the count column tell you the number of people multiplied by 1000 that are represented when reading that row. For example, the first row in the table is labeled 14 plus, then 14 plus. And then in the count column, the number is 767. This tells us that there are 767,000 Toronto residents in Generation Y who are over 14. Moving over one column to the percent, the 100% tells us that the 767,000 Toronto residents in Generation Y make up the entire population being examined in this table. All of the other percentages in the table will be fractions of the 767,000 Toronto residents in Generation Y. For example, the count beside the Apple answer is 315,000. If you divide 315,000 by 767,000, 
and then multiply by 100. The result, 41, is the percentage of Toronto residents in Generation Y with an iPhone. This percentage is not in the table, and this is why it's valuable to know how to read the counts. The 47.3% in the Apple row is the percentage of mobile phone-owning Toronto residents in Generation Y with an iPhone. To calculate this percentage, you would divide 315,000 by 666,000. The 666,000 is the weighted base located in the second-to-last row of the digital device's mobile phone, mobile phone brands personally have variable. This distinction can be confusing, but it helps us understand the tables Vividata generates. The weighted base that is part of the 14 plus variable represents all the Toronto people in Generation Y. The weighted base that is part of the digital devices, mobile phone, mobile phone brands personally have only represents Toronto people in Generation Y who have a mobile phone of any kind. At this point, you may be wondering what it means for there to be both a weighted base and an unweighted base for the row variables. To understand these, start by considering how difficult it would be for Vividata to conduct a survey whose respondents match the proportion of the population exactly. That is, if the population of the City of Toronto is about 30% Generation Y, then it would be difficult to make sure that 30% of your survey respondents are people in Generation Y. It's more likely that due to random fluctuations, the survey will capture 20 to 40% by proportion of Toronto's people in Generation Y. To correct for this, Vividata does some math to their raw survey counts to ensure they match the real proportions. In the context of the table, the unweighted base is the raw number of responses. The weighted base is the number that has been mathematically adjusted to match the correct proportions of the population. This video showed you how to answer the question, what is the most popular phone brand for Toronto residents in Generation Y, by reading a generated cross table. For more on this tool, watch the other videos in our Vividata series.